nightmare of Transnet, the South African utility company Runwater, today warned of a potential breakdown in its water delivery system. South Africans consume some 11.37 liters of bottled water, and that's where private investors or companies such as Oasis Water comes in. Johan Baez is the CEO at Oasis Water, and he joins me now for a chat to this multi-billion brand business in South Africa's most advanced economy, Africa's most advanced economy. A warm welcome to our Rice Exchange tonight. Thank you very much, Johan. Tell me, what are the big opportunities that are open to private sector investors and companies in South Africa as the country gap, uh, grapples with a shortage of potable water as we speak? Good evening, Gerson. Um, unfortunately, uh, my colleague uh, Yuan could not join us today, so I'm the Chief Investment Officer at Gaia, who uh, did the transaction together with Yuan. Um, we see two opportunities with due to the lack of potable water, um, the one being um, the direct supply of drinking water to South Africans who currently are unable to secure clean drinking water from the national um, supply system. And here we're specifically talking about bottled water refill um, locations in retail stores as well as third-party stores. And then we also have to look at a subscription-based model whereby individuals or houses or businesses pay a monthly fee and they are delivered water and empty bottles are collected from them. On the other side of the, of the coin, as it were, we look at or we see opportunities within the efficiency um, system of of potable water and using less potable water for perhaps something perhaps uses that could have been filled with other water or reclaimed water and you will see significant opportunities within recycling um, water within the households um, also perhaps sewage reclamation on site at houses or in private estates like we have here in south africa whereby that water can then be used for irrigation or um, sanitation within the house uh, um, rather than using water. Uh, very interesting, uh, 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 Johan, in terms of uh, what makes bottled water such a big market in South Africa. And now you've got Oasis uh, plugging into that uh, pipeline. What's the, how big is this market uh, in South Africa right now, considering the utilities failing to provide enough potable water for everyone? Yeah, thanks. Uh, interesting question and a very good one at that. So to assess the, the scope of the market, where it only has to look at the statistics that's coming out of the government itself. The 2023 Blue Drop Report, which assessed the circa 1,000 water supply systems in South Africa, um, the report revealed that 46% of the systems uh, in South Africa qualify as poor or having bad microbial water and are having negative health implications. So nearly half of the water systems in South Africa can't supply drink, clean drinking water. And then 29% of the uh, circa 1,000 uh, water systems in South Africa were identified to be in a critical state um, to a point where they can no longer serve the community. So if one assumes that you have your 50 million inhabitants in South Africa, 50% of the water supply systems are in dire straits. And um, if one looks at the competition as to where would they then go for drinking water, if one negates um, a cool drink and, and other means of, of consuming fluids, it's a significant opportunity that has to be filled um, and one that we are very happy to tap into. Um, OASIS has set itself up to supply nationally, not just the current means or the current model of, of small water stores. We have a national footprint, and so we can not only service our own franchisees and third-party distributors, but we can also be the single uh, um, business contact for national retailers who want to have a, a security of supply in their retail network throughout the country. Also, so interesting uh, what you folks are doing at Agaya Fund Managers. You are the uh, chief investment uh, officer. So I'm sure uh, this is you're putting money into the Oasis bottled water business. How much are you putting in uh, into this business? Talk to me. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't, I can't disclose actually numbers. Um, we can disclose that with, this is our second transaction within 14 months. Uh, this transaction, we acquired 30% of the ordinary shares in the business, uh, which together with the CEO, Johan, we now all own the majority stake. Um, what I can also say is we've seen significant growth 
um, the business doubling almost over the past two, three years. And we don't see that stopping given you know the current state of South Africa's water supply system. Um, and we are standing by to provide more capital to um, the ASIS team as they perhaps uh, you know acquire further businesses or want to expand upon the existing footprint. Um, and um, one only needed to look at the oversubscription that we had for this investment opportunity from the investors who, who, who backed us in this transaction to know that I think our investors feel the same and that they would love to put more money into Oasis. They see a lot of growth potential in the sector and they trust Gaia to make the right decisions uh, in, in applying their funding. But, but, but again, if you look at clean water, again, if you're looking at other key social sectors, you're looking to intervene with funding uh, from, from Gaia fund managers and, and uh, what other sectors are you looking to support? Water is very important, especially in very huge areas such as the Guateng region and others. Uh, how is the market taking all of this and are you looking to see other areas in which investment funds are needed? Yes, so Guy is a specialist infrastructure asset manager. Um, so we focus on economic infrastructure, particularly in the country. Um, so the major sectors that we are um, deploying funding currently, naturally the one being water that we're speaking about now, and the other big opportunities we see is with uh, distributed renewable energy. So that is to say on-site electricity generation for businesses and factories that need security of supply and stable pricing going forward to ensure that their businesses work. Um, there we've listed um, Africa's first uh, renewable energy uh, real estate investment trust, which basically uh, gives a different, more tax efficient uh, platform for investors to gain access to renewable energy as an investment sector. And then we also um, are deploying quite a bit of money within the digital infrastructure space, uh, specifically fiber optic networks, um, as we as you saw with cell phones in Africa, the lack of um, an alternative for, for South Africans where it goes to uh, cheap broadband uh, internet access where ADSL or other alternatives weren't provided to um, low income uh, suburbs, the fiber sector provides a leapfrog technology to give them access to cheap fiber and it means that they would be able to consume high quantities of data, um, which they cannot actually currently access due to the cost of doing it over mobile networks. Uh, very interesting how all of these uh, investments are coming through. Do you think uh, the, when you look at the, the broader, the wider South African economy, do you see uh, opportunities in terms of other areas to intervene? You talk about water, you talk about electricity. Again, the, the problem with ESCOM, are you looking to, fall, to intervene in areas such as logistics, which were the problems we see with the Transnet? Um, Transnet is, is, is a difficult one. Um, we own 11% of the N3 toll road. Um, we made that investment back in 2018, and it has been performing quite well due to the migration for, of uh, uh, freight rail from rail onto the roads. I think Transnet, until they release a private public participation system that truly um, encompasses where it should be, rather than wanting to retain control and, and you know, have a monopolistic view on it rather than saying what is a true competitive market uh, pricing structure and participation methodology. I think Transnet will remain on its own, um, but I can tell you that the capital is there, the willingness is there of, of the private sector to participate and assist the economy to grow. Um, and it's, it's all about getting a, the necessary partnership and support from government and the policymakers to, to truly uplift the country and, and achieve um, the opportunities with that we all know is out there and, and um, so we can succeed to the level that we believe we should and, and can. All right, Dr. Hendrik, thank you so much. The Chief Investment Officer at uh, Gaia Fund Managers. Thank you so much. Have a great evening there in Cape Town.